What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another Dark Matter Guide. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing how to unlock all of the different camos for the LMGs in Black Ops 3 on your road to Dark Matter. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so I just wanted to start this off by saying, if you've missed any of the previous episodes, I will leave a link to the playlist down below. I've covered everything so far, aside from assault rifles and of course LMGs, which we're covering today. So with the LMGs, just like with pretty much every other gun in the game, we have to get 100 headshots with each of the LMGs before we unlock the final 5 challenges for that LMG. For the Dingo and the BRM, I'd never really hear too many complaints about getting headshots with these, so I'll just kind of skim over them quickly. I basically just treat them like an assault rifle that aims down sight a little bit slower, and it's pretty straightforward. I definitely recommend running quick draw on every LMG pretty much every time you have the opportunity to. And for the Dingo, I also recommend foregrip if you're going for headshots. You can also put a grip on the BRM if you want, but I find it doesn't really need it. Uh, the, the BRM is going to be two shots to the body, one shot to the head to get a headshot, and the Dingo is going to be three shots to the body, one shot to the head to get a headshot. And the, with these ones, I basically just sort of aim like upper chest or neck area to compensate for a little bit of flinch or recoil. And most of the time I find the headshots come fairly easily. Also, the iron sights on both of these guns are pretty good. So I personally didn't run any optics while I was going for headshots with these two guns. But it's really up to you. That's always a personal preference sort of thing. If you are really struggling with these in core game modes, then just go into hardcore. Both of these will be a one-shot headshot at any range you find yourself in, as long as you're not using a suppressor. If you put a suppressor on the dingo, it will actually make it a two-shot headshot at some ranges. Moving on to the next one, this is the Gorgon, and this is the one that probably a lot of you guys are here in this video for because I've seen lots of complaints about getting headshots with the Gorgon, and it's not easy because the rate of fire is so low and the handling sucks as well. So with the Gorgon, I actually don't recommend going into hardcore, at least try it in core game modes first, and the simple reason for this is the aim down sight time is super slow, and you can get killed like 10 times over before you can even aim down sight in hardcore with the, uh, with the Gorgon. Whereas in core game modes, you have a little bit more time to, to do things like aim down sight. Also, in core, it's going to be a two-shot kill at any range as long as you're not putting a suppressor on it. Never put a suppressor on it, by the way. A couple little tips. First off, I kind of treat the Gorgon as a sniper rifle when I'm trying to go for headshots with it. I play very conservatively. I still have quick draw on it all the time. And I also like putting some form of a sight on it. The recon sight is great or you can go with an ELO or Red Dot, whatever you feel comfortable with, maybe a Varix. And the best way to get headshots in my mind with this gun is to try and pick off people that are using cover and trying to head glitch pieces of cover or that are sitting in windows and not really moving around too much. With a really slow rate of fire, I find it very difficult to track targets, especially when you're aiming for the small target of the head. It can be very, very difficult to try and get headshots on those people. So most of the time, I'll just go for a body shot just to finish that guy off, get the kill. And I'll just focus on the people that are trying to snipe or just hang back behind cover. The nice thing about this is a lot of the times all you can ever see is their head. So all you have to do is shoot what you can see and you're going to be getting headshots. I don't normally like recommending this sort of playstyle, but with the Gorgon, you're essentially forced into this sort of role. Just because the handling is so slow with it, you can't really be rushing around effectively. So this one, it's going to take some time. You just kind of have to suck it up. It's going to be very slow paced gameplay most of the time. But if you just stick with it, the headshots will come over time and you will get better as well. I also recommend going in Ground War for this. Ground War is great because you typically get the bigger maps. You don't get any of the really small maps like Combine and stuff, which I don't really like using the Gorgon on because your advantage really comes when you're at a pretty decent distance away from your enemy. And also with Ground War, you have lots of targets and lots of people also like to play in that playstyle where they sit in a window or they sit behind a common piece of cover. So there's lots of targets to pick off at all times. It'll just speed up that gameplay a little bit because you're not going to be moving around and it is going to feel very slow paced most of the time. So finally we have the 48 dredge. Now some people I've heard struggle with this for getting headshots and other people it was very easy. For me personally I found it very easy once I realized that the iron sights really sucked and I decided to put an elo sight on there or I don't know what I used actually. I'm pretty sure I used an elo. But I would recommend with the dredge to use some form of a sight, just whatever you're comfortable with, I would probably put a sight on because I don't like the iron sights at all. I mean, if you do like them, great for you, you might as well use it if it's working for you, but I would recommend for most people to use some form of an optic. 
But basically with the dredge, I just like to always try to keep my aim at the headshot level. Again, just like with the Gorgon, I kind of like to pick people off that are trying to head glitch because you do have a very accurate gun with the dredge. It just shoots like a laser beam of six bullets all in one very concentrated area. So if you can see their head, it's very easy to pick their head off. But I find you can be a little bit more aggressive with the dredge. Not quite as aggressive as the BRM or the Dingo, but you can push up a little bit more than the Gorgon. Just make sure you're always keeping your sights up to that head level or around neck level even a lot of times I find because that little bit of recoil within the burst will often take you up to the head. And the headshots will start coming in. Like I said, I highly recommend running a sight of some sort on this gun. So once we get those 100 headshots done for that gun, then we unlock the final five challenges. And the first of those five challenges is the Ardent Challenge. And for the LMGs, this requires you to get 10 Revenge Medals. Now, Revenge Medals are earned by killing the enemy that killed you most recently. And for this one, I find they just kind of come over time as you're going through the other challenges that we're going to be talking about in a second. But if they don't and you just have these ones left over, I highly recommend going into Free For All. Free For All is great for this because oftentimes you keep running into the same guy over and over again. And it just gives you more opportunities to get those Revenge Medals. Moving on to the next one, we have the Burnt Challenge, and this one requires you to get 50 kills with no attachments on the gun. And this one kind of sucks for LMGs because Quick Draw I find to be almost a necessity, but you're going to have to suck it up and deal without Quick Draw. Big thing with this is just make sure you're pre-aiming at corners and uh, common pieces of cover and stuff like that as much as possible, and play pretty defensively. At least that's how I like to treat it. You can kind of get away with rushing a little bit with the Dingo and maybe even the BRM, but even then, I'd like to be pre-aiming corners as much as possible because if you get caught out in the open and you're not aiming down sights already, ready for your enemy, you're going to be in trouble. Moving on to the Bliss Camel, this one is kind of the opposite. It requires you to get 50 kills with an optic and 5 attachments, so this means you won't be able to have any perks equipped while you're going for this challenge. And with this one, I find this one to be quite a bit easier than the uh, the no attachments one because you can have things like quick draw and foregrip and you can have an optic on there and it's just great. Rapid fire also helps with a lot of these LMGs, so just load it up with attachments and this one should come fairly easy. Next up, we have the battle camo and this one requires you to get two rapid kills five times with both of those kills coming from the LMG. And I find this one usually just happens as you go for the burnt and the bliss camo. But if it doesn't, I would just recommend going into game modes like Safeguard or Domination, or even better, Ground War Safeguard or Domination. And these ones should just come fairly easily if you are playing the objective and, and trying to keep enemies off the robot or off the flag, for instance. Just make sure you're getting posted up behind some good cover overlooking the objective, and this will be very easy. So finally, we have the Chameleon Camo, and this one requires you to get 5 kills in a single life 5 times with that gun. Now again, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. You could get like three kills with a gun or with one of these guns and then switch to a pistol, get a couple kills or something and then switch back. You'll still need to finish off the final two kills to, to make five total for that life. Now, another thing I wanted to mention that I haven't mentioned in the past because I, I didn't really run into it a lot, uh, but now I've been seeing more and more people asking about it is this life doesn't carry between rounds in uh, round-based game mode. So in Domination, for instance, if you get three kills and it's the end of the first round, you get three kills, and you stay alive all the way to the end of the round, and the round ends, and then you start the second round, you actually start at zero again. Even though you're technically within the same life, there's some sort of a bug in the game that requires you to get all five kills in one life in one round. It's a really frustrating bug, but you just have to know it's there and deal with it. Again, Rejack can actually help you with this as well. If you get three kills, for instance, with a Dingo, and then you get killed and you rejack and you survive that rejack you only have to get two more kills and you still it still counts as one life so that's one nice thing that will definitely help you out especially with lmgs because at a distance a lot of times you're behind cover when you go down so you can rejack and then you can just like run away to heal up and, and regroup yourself and then you can get back in the action which is great one big tip with the gun that i feel like most of you are going to struggle with the most and that is the gorgon is use a pistol on your class. I like to treat the Gorgon as if it's a sniper rifle. Like, I, I basically treat it as if it's a Draken that aims down sight really slow. So I hang back, I, I might sit in a window or something like that, I'll have Rejack on if I'm really struggling with this, and I will have a pistol on my class. That way if someone sneaks up on me or they flank me, I can swap to my pistol really quick and I can have a gun that's very effective up close, 
I can take that guy out and then I can get back to where I want to be, which is picking people off at a distance. Now, the reason I like to swap to a pistol is the Gorgon is just terrible up close unless you're already pre-aimed and you're ready for that guy to come around the corner, which oftentimes you don't really have enough time to react to. You just realize like, oh crap, there's a guy right there. You can quickly swap to your pistol, spin around, kill the guy, and then just get back in the fight. Another thing is, if you are really struggling with this, I would recommend throwing on some shock charges and trip mines to watch your back, because that's really where the threats are going to be. Now, I normally hate recommending this sort of playstyle, which is like a really campy sort of playstyle, but for those people that are really struggling and they aren't really finding any success by being uh, slightly mobile and trying to move around the map a little bit, this is simply going to be the most effective way for them to get bloodthirsties. So, if you're just going for this specific challenge, there's no shame in, in running a few uh, shock charges and trip mines to watch your back. So, there we have it. Once you complete these final five challenges for a gun, you unlock gold for that gun. Once you get gold for all of the LMGs, you'll get diamond for the LMGs. And then finally, once you get diamond for every gun and weapon and launcher in the game, you get the Dark Matter Camo. So that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. We still have assault rifles to cover, which we will be covering in the next probably week or two. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you guys next time.